Now to the big business of shoplifting. It's not just a problem for the stores, it's affecting you too. Tonight we're undercover as police prepare to bring down one highly organized shoplifting ring and the woman they believe could be the key to it all. Here's ABC's Matt Gutman. It is a $13 billion epidemic. Shoplifters across America are costing close to $35 million a day to retailers, and the numbers keep growing. As seen on these YouTube flash mob videos, many are brazen enough to steal anything and everything. But while shoplifting out in the open is one way to do it, down in Polk County, Florida, there's a much more sophisticated method. All right, Todd, they're approaching the store right now. That what you were watching, investigators say, is an organized shoplifting ring in action. In this case, the suspect, Melinda Ford, a.k.a. Puffy, is about to hit the dressing room of a Bell's department store in Florida. Right now, what we're seeing is our main target in the store. Last year, we were given access to an unfolding investigation to a crime that starts with a sleight of hand and ends up costing all of us big money. Cops tell us that Puffy is their prime suspect. They call her the booster, and they believe she could be the key to bringing down a multi-layered Florida shoplifting ring. We're going to be picking up another individual. We have one occupant and one suspect. That's why Sergeant Jim Ostacek from the Polk County Sheriff's Office has spent nearly a month chasing Puffy as she moves from store to store. All right, we're in hot pursuit right now. Westbound, Brewster Downs, number two lane. Westbound on I-4. I'm not exactly sure where she's going, but um, we're following. Over the last three years, shoplifting has become a growing national problem. Stores mark up merchandise to offset the losses, and it'll cost your household roughly $400 a year. Uh, it sounds like they're headed to a Bell's. The woman driving Puffy around in that yellow beetle? All right, they're pulling in now. They call her Peewee, and we're blurring her face because she's actually a police informant. Peewee has told the cops that Puffy's M.O. is to enter the fitting room with two of everything. And then, once inside, conceal one of each item under her street clothes. Oh, he's exiting the store. Peewee tells the cops that Puffy then hands the items over to a network of men and women she pays to return the goods to the store. We watched as Bell Security monitored what they say was one of those illegal returns going down. All right, so she just returned the stolen stuff. Police say suspected returners cash the stolen goods in for store credits in the form of gift cards. They believe those gift cards will later turn up on popular online auction sites. It seems like the gift cards are pretty much money, right? Yes. Those are kind of like, you know, it's gold. After weeks of following Puffy in and out of stores along a 90-mile stretch from Orlando all the way to Tampa, Sarge and his team are finally ready to arrest her. Investigators say if they can flip Puffy, they're betting they can round up the returners, the fencers, and bring down the whole booster ring. Bell's security team is in place. Both subjects have entered the store. They're inside the store, monitoring Puffy and the police informant Pee Wee on surveillance cameras and radioing their movements to officers outside waiting in the parking lot. Subjects are now exiting the store. An unmarked police car is waiting. Both subjects have entered the vehicle. The vehicle is moving. As they exit the parking lot, the police pull up right behind them. Peewee, who's been wearing a wire for weeks now, fakes being terrified. They coming, they coming. They're pulling me. Oh, oh the 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 This particular Bells is right across the street from their own sheriff's substation. So they pull over Puffy and Peewee right into the station's parking lot. Puffy is escorted inside directly into an interrogation room. They need to turn Puffy because they believe as the head of the ring, she's the only one who can lead them to everyone involved. I want to get one thing straight with you, okay? Understand, if you're going to cooperate with us you're gonna, and we're going to help you, then you got to fully co cooperate. And if you don't want to do that, you need to tell me now because I don't want to waste my time, you know what I'm saying? Police say the rest of the suspected accomplices likely don't even know who each other are. I want a name of every person you can, you can set up a deal and sell this stuff to today. 
After a few hours confronting her, police say Puffy finally seems to crack. These guys have basically flipped Puffy and they've managed to get her to call everybody in her virtual Rolodex. And she's gonna go to them one by one, talk to them, try to sell them something. And these guys are gonna bust all of them eventually. Over the next 24 hours, Puffy works and works well for the police. He will be like the only person, but he don't have her phone number. Methodically helping them set up and then round up for alleged accomplices. And as she sets off to bust them, she seems surprised that what she's been doing is considered a serious crime. I never thought that what I did was this serious. It's very serious. It actually is an organized crime. Puffy, who will later receive a two-year prison term plus 10 years of probation, gets to work, helping to round up a dozen suspected returners. We're picking up one of the other suspects right now. She's got a black shirt on, red pants. That's coming right forward me. These are the people Puffy claims she paid to return for stolen merchandise. Police say they have evidence that 33-year-old Erica is also one of them. Hey, Paul, we're almost to you. Right there. Don't me like that. She would later plead guilty and was given 24 months of probation. I don't want him in my face with these cameras. Man, like Erica. I'm a stone cold criminal. Police say Erica only made about five or ten bucks for each return. Let's do it. Next, the suspected fencers. They're the people who Puffy tells us buy those gift cards from her for about 50 cents on the dollar. What I do? You got a warrant for your arrest. Police say one of Puffy's fencers also sells her boosted merchandise at a neighborhood store. So they send her in with dresses they've secretly marked. I've been stealing all damn day. I'm going to go back to the store. Police have coached Puffy to tell Ray, a.k.a. Bubba, that the items are stolen. A six address. All right, baby, I ain't gonna argue with you. It's stolen. Ain't no overhead over for me. The next day, the police raid this store. Fulton County Sheriff's Office search warrant. And find most of that merchandise up for sale. I didn't know it was stolen or nothing. I, I want you to remember something, okay? Yeah. And I want you to keep in mind that your store is video and audio recorded. Yeah. When she told me whatever, I already know what's going on, so... Yeah, you got to be responsible for my action. Yes, sir. He was later convicted of dealing in stolen property and sentenced to 36 months in prison. At any time, did you have any idea at all that we were following you or anything like that? Nope. Never in a million. In the three weeks we followed them, the Polk County Sheriff's Office arrested Puffy and 16 of her suspected associates and were able to stop what they say is one of the largest organized retail crime rings operating in Central Florida. For Nightline, I'm Matt Gutman in Lakeland, Florida.